Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us on uh, this Thursday. We remain on the ground in Roseau, Dominica just for a bit as uh, that country prepares for general elections announced by the Prime Minister on the 6th of December. The United Workers Party, the main opposition over there, have uh, said categorically that they are standing down and will not participate in this um, general election according to the party's uh, leadership. It is not a Dominica election. It is a Roosevelt scared election. No better individual at this time to share with us what's happening on the ground and to discuss the political maneuverings over in the Commonwealth of Dominica uh, than the political leader of the main opposition United Workers Party, Mr. Lennox Linton. Mr. Linton, good morning. Thanks for waking up early and agreeing to join us here in St. Lucia. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, St. Lucia. How are you doing? We're not too bad. I um, hope all is well in your in your domain at this time. Well, just, just first of all, I, I'm not the political leader of the United Workers Party. I'm the former political leader. The former political leader. The, I am the leader of the parliamentary opposition. Leader of the parliamentary opposition. Thanks for, thanks for that clarification, um, sir. Now, now, you have been at the helm of, of the UWP for a number of years um, before recently uh, stepping aside. Over the years, what are some of the troubling issues you have monitored and witnessed with the election process over in Dominica? First of all, you, you asked a question uh, in the promotion for this, uh, for this interview, <laughs> whether democracy is, is, at, is at risk in Dominica or whether democracy is under threat. So, so I wanted to, to comment on that a little bit. Yeah, sure. Because as we start, because I think that democracy is in an interesting state in Dominica. It really, to my mind, has been hijacked, and uh, it needs to be rescued. Because when we talk democracy, we talk about a uh, system of living our lives that has four key elements in it. One, there is, in a democracy, a system for choosing and replacing government of the people, by the people, for the people, through free and fair elections that have the hallmark of integrity. Number two, there is active participation of people in politics and in civic life. Number three, there is protection of human rights and citizens. And fourthly, there is a rule of law in which the laws apply to everybody equally. Do we have that in Dominica? Number one, we don't have a system in Dominica for choosing free, in a free and fair manner, government of the people, by the people, for the people. Over the years, we have seen the legalities, the, the legal structure surrounding elections in Dominica totally compromised so that the, rule, the ruling party, the Dominica Labour Party, has been able to engage a number of illegalities and irregularities in order to have election results go in its favor. Mm. And we saw that in 2009, we saw that in 2014, we saw that in 2019. We challenged the results of the election in 2009 unsuccessfully. There was a challenge from three private individuals that brought 15 members of the Dominica Labour Party who contested the 2014 elections before the court on the criminal charge of treating in the elections. And then in 2019, we filed petitions against the results in 10 of the constituencies. Those petitions were struck out by the judge at first instance. We appealed to the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. They determined that because it was not a final decision of the judge at first instance, then it would not be appealed. And the Caribbean Court of Justice agreed with that ruling of the CCJ. Mm. So having looked at what was before it and having presided over the, the, the treating matter, in elections from 2014, the CCJ felt compelled to give some guidance on the future for the electoral process in Dominica. 
And it, it said that there remain areas of grave concern over how these 20, the process for these 2019 elections was conducted. And future elections in Dominica ought not to proceed with these or similar taints. The taints are poisons of the process. Mm -hmm. The taints are the corrupting influences that prevent it from delivering uh, free and fair elections with integrity. So, so based on the evidence of the past few election cycles, we do not have a system uh, that we can rely on for choosing and replacing government of the people by the people for the people, which is where the reform consultation comes in um, with Sir Dennis Byron that was engaged by this administration, Roosevelt Skerritt, mm -hmm. in 2020, right after the 2019 elections, after he felt, I guess, so guilty that he had led the country into, an, or misled the country into another election without reform. He then indicated that Sir Dennis Byron would be engaged to look at all the recommendations that we have had on electoral reform, to consult with the people, and uh, to provide guidance. His recommendations now on what the reform should look like. It was the the view of Sir Dennis Byron in, in consultation with the uh, Electoral Commission that his recommendations in this reform exercise would be reduced to amendments to the two critical pieces of election legislation in Dominica, the House of Assembly Elections Act and the Registration of Electors Act. So rather than present a whole long list of recommendations, he would reduce those recommendations to amendments to the legislation so that they could take effect there. He advised the government, he advised us in opposition on the 6th of November by letter that these recommendations had the consensus of the Electoral Commission. And so he was ready to present them to us, discuss them with us before issuing phase one of his report that would focus on the amendments to the Registration of Electors Act. On that very day that Sir Dennis sent his letter, the Prime Minister announced that there was going to be election, which means we're going to have another election now in 2022 without the reforms that the Independent Electoral Commission promised since 2008. Now, what is so immoral about this is that three days before, on the occasion of National Day celebrations, mm. on the occasion of the celebration of our 44th anniversary of independence, the Prime Minister addressed the nation. And in that address to the nation, he spoke about the electoral reform consultancy of Sir Dennis Byron mm. and indicated that he was looking forward to receiving and implementing the recommendations, the reform recommendations. Three days later, when he has received the correspondence from Sir Dennis outlining how we go forward, he will present his report. The parliament can take it to, the, the, it can be taken to parliament in, in December to be enacted by January, the first uh, House of the Registration of Electors Act, and then the recommendations for reform of the House of Assembly Elections Act could go to Parliament by April to be enacted in May of this year. All of this would be a full two years before the constitutional due date of the next election. And Mrs. Skerritt rings the bell for the election because everybody says and agrees that he has the constitutional discretion mm -hmm. so to do. But the constitution that gives him the discretion to call the election at any time doesn't give him the responsibility to run the election. It passes that responsibility for the conduct of elections to the electoral commission. And so in operating our system in the public interest, there has to be some sort of connect between the prime minister who has the discretion to call elections and the electoral commission that has the responsibility to run it. Because what we have now is a situation where we contend that the Prime Minister called an election, which he knows the Independent Electoral Commission is not ready to conduct. And it's not ready to conduct because the Prime Minister 
and the Electoral Commission have committed that the process of for election mm -hmm. to Dominica will be reformed. There will be changes to it. The taints will be removed so, so that we have a platform for free and fair elections. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, what the Prime Minister did in terms of the Dennis Byron report was not, was not just a promise, you know. It was a commitment that brought state resources into the picture because Sir Dennis Byron was paid for the consultancy $450,000 plus an additional $200,000 for legal drafting services to reduce those recommendations of the reform consultancy to new election laws. And when you look at this, what you see is a squalid betrayal of the trust of the people, which goes very much to one of the key elements of democracy that we talked about, which is the system for choosing and replacing government of the people, the people for the people through free and fair elections. We don't have that, number one. Number two, in terms of the democracy, is active participation by the people in the politics and the civic life of the country. Dominicans live in fear. They're afraid to speak. They're afraid to talk. Why? Because they will fall out of favor with the ruling party that has control of the resources and, will, and can decide whether they live or die, whether they breathe or whether they swim or they float. And there's that fear in Dominica which prevents people from active participation in the politics and in the civic life of the country. So, so that's number two key element of democracy that we don't have in Dominica. Then you have the third element, protection of human rights for all citizens. Mm. I have been dragged before the court for walking in the capital city of Roseau in April of this year. In a land where the constitution gives me, as an individual, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, freedom of association, freedom of movement from point A to point B in the country. And I am charged, along with others, for walking in the city of Roseau because the police have decided that we did not have permission for a uh, what do you call it, a procession, a public procession. We were walking. A few of us were walking. And I'm also before the court for incitement, charges of incitement, because I made some comments where I freely expressed myself on the state of democracy in Dominica, the state of governance, and uh, the responsibility of the ruling party for the for the sorry state of affairs in the country back in 2017. So, as someone who witnessed, who witnessed a fellow member of parliament of the United Workers Party in Dominica, kidnapped from a vehicle in his constituency, where we were traveling one, after, one Saturday afternoon a couple of years ago and hauled away to the police station. And today, no charge has been filed against him because he was doing nothing wrong. I was with him. He was in his constituency. We were driving in the vehicle. We stopped in the vicinity of the residence of the prime minister. And because we were in the residence, in the area of the residence of the Prime Minister, and there was something going on there that caught our attention that we stopped to look at, police pulled him out of the vehicle. He was not on the road. He was not interfering with anybody. They pulled him out of the vehicle and took him away. Up to this day, no charges have been filed against him. So the question now is, what are his rights to move freely? even in his constituency that he represents in the parliament of Dominica. We cannot claim, therefore, that there is protection of the human rights of the citizens of Dominica 
when some of us are treated in that manner. Our rights have been set aside, cast aside, because we do not support the ruling party. And then th th this question of rule of law, in which laws and procedures apply equally to all. Another personal example, just recent, well, just recently, the police took action against somebody who made a Facebook post threatening the life of the prime minister. They have charged the individual. The individual is out on $30,000 bail. But in 2019, a minister of government, a sitting minister of government, openly, openly threatened my life, called for me to disappear. And to date, the police have done absolutely nothing. There have been other threats on my life as well. Paid mercenaries from Britain visited my home in a criminal trespass in 2019, the election year. A complaint was made to the police. All of the evidence of the trespass was passed to them. They have done nothing about these two British nationals funded by monies from the sale of Dominican passports who visited my home in order to, in a criminal trespass, in order to implicate me in high crimes and misdemeanors. Just hold on for me, Mr. Mr. Linton. When, when you look at closely what you just described there, the, the 2019 invasion of your, your personal property and, and no response by, by the police, but police moving to, to charge a citizen um, who made disparaging remarks on, on social media um, against the Prime Minister. That coupled with um, the April um, charge against you for walking in the capital and the incident within the constituency of an opposition parliamentarian. When you look at all of these happenings, it appears that Dominica is losing its stature as a democratic state. The, de the democracy in Dominica has been hijacked by the ruling party of Dominica, and Dominica has to find a way of rescuing its democracy, of saving our country, getting back our democracy, because right now, it mm -hmm. really and truly, in a real way, does not exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Let's, been hijacked. Yeah, hi it, this, for the, this for the convenience of the ruling party, and I don't think that was the, the, the intention. Yeah, um, it would be interesting, some of your recommendations, how <laughs> how Dominica can release itself from from that stranglehold that they describe as a as a hijack move, but let's go, go back. Go, go. go ahead. Yeah. No. No. Go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go back. Um. So, if you if you may, to the action that you call immoral, on the third of November, um, announcing that he's looking forward to the report on electoral reform, receiving his letter right. on the sixth, three days right. after calling a snap election, even without receiving the report and, 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 and making a move to reform the process. What could have concerned your prime minister so much within that short space of time that he hit that switch so quickly? The, well, l l let's start with what the prime minister said. The prime minister, remember, heads the party that has 18 seats in the parliament of 21. So we have three seats. He has 18. The Prime Minister says that he wants a national reset. This, this election, more than two years before the constitutional due date, is necessary in the Prime Minister's mind, and he communicates that, because he needs a national reset. And that national reset is going to allow him, as he has done, to get rid of 10 of sitting members of Parliament, 10 of them out of 18. He has 18 sitting members of parliament. He's getting rid of 10 of them within three years. And he wants to have a new team to face the challenges of governance mm. post-COVID. But he hails his team, his team, as the ones who broke the back of the COVID pandemic in Dominica successfully wrestled it to the ground mm -hmm. and then in the same breath he's telling you those very individuals 
They need a reset. Ten of those very individuals have no place in the governance of the country post-COVID. I don't think that makes sense to anybody. So, but so quick question, quick question there for me. What does it say to the performance of the 10 who were sacked two years ahead of, of well, two years into, three years into their, their, their tenure? They were given five years by the people. They've been sacked um, three years into that. What does it say about their performance and even your prime minister's selection of candidates and appointment of ministers? Because he, he just hit a reset in 2019. Yes. Yes, he had a reset in 2019, and he wants another reset three years later for, for the reasons I mentioned. But I don't think it says anything about the competence or the capabilities of these ministers. I think it says a lot about the personal preferences of the prime minister, who, who, who is allowed to run his party like a dictator. Because this is a party that has not had any conference of delegates of the party as political parties have for nine years the last delegates convention of the dominica labor party was in 2013 so for all the i i became leader of the united workers party political leader in 2013 september 2013 mm -hmm. so that for all of the years the nine years that i've been leader of the united workers party the, the Dominican Labour Party has not held a single delegate conference. So the Prime Minister has this arrangement in his party where he can do what he wants. He can tell 11, he can tell 10 members of his parliamentary team to have to step down and nobody is allowed to say anything. Everybody steps down and who is ordered to step up by him is step up. There's only one departure from that in this 2022, 20, where the Mr. Mr. Scared had his mind on somebody to replace the sitting member of parliament in the Rosa South constituency. So the individual was selected. Uh, he is the former, or, or I think maybe outgoing, we should say outgoing general manager of First Caribbean International Bank in Dominica. That was Mr. Skerritt's choice to run in the Rosa South constituency. The young lady who was in that constituency won it for the Labour Party in 2019. Said, "No, I'm not. I'm not moving." And she called on her supporters within the party, and uh, she made some some noises in the constituency, and asked her her loyal soldiers to bully the individual that Mr. Skerritt had chosen to replace her because she was not ready to leave, and bully him to let him know that she, Shakira Lapat, is the parliamentary representative of the South. Apparently, the gentleman experienced some discomfort and backed down, and Mr. Skerritt had to agree to back off and leave the MP from 2019 as the candidate Mm. Uh, for the 2022, for his 2022 elections. So that, that was the, the sole departure from everybody accepting what Mr. Skerritt says and does and just going along with it. Um, we are told that the facilitator is money, that people get paid to step down, that they get paid to step up. And uh, in some cases, they get um, good jobs. There are some people who have stepped down who are in line now for ambassadorial um, positions overseas whether it's at the UN or the British High Commission or the Washington engagement or maybe even um, Beijing in China, there are, there are options for them and everybody has gone away quietly while the new team of relatively unknown people have been, are, are contesting the election, are involved as candidates for the election on December the 6th. So, I just feel that we are in a situation in Dominica that is untenable. Uh, yesterday, I heard uh, there was something floating around our social media spaces that army officials, army personnel from Barbados were arriving in Dominica, had begun to arrive, or 
were to arrive either today or, or tomorrow, or maybe they came in yesterday, I don't know. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not confirming this. I'm simply mm -hmm. stating what has been in our social media spaces in the past 24 hours. And to the extent that that is so, remember we had an incident back in 2019 where the RSS dispatched a contingent of soldiers to Dominica, they say to help keep the peace. They ended up tear gassing uh, sleeping people in the West Coast village of Salisbury and uh, overall intimidating voters um, who were getting ready for an election on the, on the 6th of, of December 2019. I, I, I have a problem with the interference of regional leaders through the institutions of that nature in the internal affairs of Dominica. There is no state of emergency in Dominica at this time. There is no crisis of, uh, of protest action that police are unable to deal with. And so there is no reason for any security force, be it army or be it police, from any CARICOM country to be in Dominica at this time. Mm -hmm. and, and to the extent that Barbados has people here, I'm asking the Prime Minister of Barbados to recall them. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that you went, Mr. Linton, because that's that's where I was going next. The regional ramifications, all what's happening in Dominica now. 2019, the RSS was sent into Rozo and other parts of, of the country um, to stabilize things there. Based on the domestic picture that, that you would have painted and your the previous guest did the same, the domestic picture on the ground in, in Rosu and across Dominica. Um, based on the CCJ's recommendation that another election should not be held in the Commonwealth without the reforms implemented. We don't hear anything from Caribbean leaders. Nothing. Uh, you, you, you have a, a, a gentleman like yourself saying that democracy has been hijacked. What is with Caribbean leadership, people seem comfortable in their own little domain. Why are they not saying anything? Or are they so well connected and, and all in this together? Well, uh, the, what, it, what it looks like to us on the outside is that a club is in operation and the members of the club look out for each other with, with no regard for what is happening with the people, especially in the case of Dominica, because I'll tell you something. These reforms that we are fighting for and have been struggling for for close to two decades, every other CARICOM country has them, you know, the basic reforms. Which other CARICOM country is voting without ID cards? Which other Caribbean country doesn't have a procedure for sanitizing its voters, voters list? list yeah. We have a voters list of 75,000 people in a population of less than 70,000. And when you look at those realities, when you look at what we're fighting for, when you look at what we are duty-bound to demonstrate for, it is totally unconscionable for CARICOM leaders to be sending in troops to quell demonstrations of people against oppression from their government that is so patently obvious and wrong. So this is, a, this is an important time for Dominica because political parties that behave in the way that the Dominican Labour Party is behaving only have one thing in mind, you know, ownership, hmm. control of the people, the resources, and the, the, the resources, the wealth, and the institutions of the country. Hmm for their personal gain. And, and we have a situation in Dominica where significant amounts of the resources of Dominica at the 44th anniversary of independence are under foreign control. Now, these are resources that have come from the sale of Dominican citizenship. And I cite for you the example of 2016 to 2020, we raised $5.4 billion, 
$5,400 million from the sale of citizenships to 23,794 persons mm. in other parts of the world in distant lands. 23,794 citizens for $5.4 billion. $5,400 million of that amount for the four-year period. Only $1.2 billion or $1,200 million came into the treasury of Dominica for the use of the people of Dominica. From, from your information, from, from your information, where, where is that four point something billion that's unaccounted for? The four point something billion is unaccounted for in accounts that are under the control of the prime minister and his friends overseas. <laughs> and, and while that is happening, people are suffering, people are struggling in Dominica. The government refused to give a stimulus package of assistance to people in the COVID-19, battling COVID-19 pandemic. The government has nothing to offer the people at this time of food shortages and rising prices occasioned by the war, occasioned by the aftermath of the, the supply chain disruption in the aftermath of the COVID pandemic. And we have all of this money sitting overseas under foreign control of friends of the prime minister. I don't know any other Caribbean country that is in a similar situation or any other Caribbean country where that could have happened without mm -hmm. Massive protest action yeah. for the resignation of the entire cabinet of ministers that has put the country in this situation. So that when we, with legitimate reasons to protest, go to the streets, the Caribbean leaders who pay no attention to our plight have no business sending any troops into Dominica to say they want to keep the peace or anything of that sort. There can be no peace without justice. Yeah. And they must pay attention to our justice issues if they want to have any role in say, the sending people to help keep yeah, the peace. Just, just engage me a bit more because I think it speaks to a, a deeper issue. Uh, they, they don't say anything uh, over the injustices that your people in Dominica face. And you pointed to, to several, several examples. What does it say about themselves as leaders going to CS meetings with a gentleman who promises people reforms to the process over and over, but not promise it, not delivering on those reforms. Engaging a gentleman like that who we appreciate preempted the presentation of a report by Sir Dennis Byron in, in calling a, a snap election. What does it say about the Mia Motleys, the Philip Pierres, and the other leaders around the Caribbean who are silent on? issues of importance to, to other fellow Caribbean citizens. It simply says that they like what he's doing, they approve of what he's doing, and they would like to be what he in Dominica, they would like to be in their countries mm -hmm. as well. Because I think regardless of what their intentions are, he's a little bit ahead of the game mm -hmm. in terms of establishing through so-called democracy a, a, a full-blown tyranny and dictatorship in Dominica. Yeah. And they would like to see that for themselves. We, we, we know the history. So, of, go ahead. So, so, you you hear, you do not hear anything at all from any leader, even those who sent troops into Dominica through the RSS in 2019, have had nothing to say about the CCJ admonition that there should be no elections in Dominica without reforms, without removing the taints to the electoral process. No Caribbean leader that was involved in the RSS action in Dominica prior to the 2019 election has had anything to say about the CCJ guidance with respect to the 2019 elections. Mm -hmm. And that says something about them. It says that their preference is, their default is, to be just like him and to do just like him yeah. if the people of their countries would allow them the chance to do that. The United World Party in Dominica has said that it will not participate in, 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 in the upcoming general elections. Overnight, we're hearing of some political factors, it, factions indicating their willingness to, to participate. Why do you think it's necessary 
for the people of Dominica as well to, to stand down and not, not partake? Well, the what we have said is that the people of Dominica should stand down from this election because it's not about them. The election that is about the people of Dominica is due late 2024, early 2025. That, that is the time frame for that election, by which time the election of the people of Dominica will be conducted through a process that is, that is not tainted, uh, a process that is reformed so that the compromising influences to free and fair elections are removed. Th that is the legitimate expectation of the people. And to the extent that they have been denied that yet again, the people have no business in this election mm -hmm. and they should stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Now, that's just us, one political party in Dominica, because, you know, it is not, it is not our political party alone by itself the prime minister has taken on with this action the prime minister's relentless attack on the electoral process the prime minister's hijacking of that process for his own benefit is not an issue for the united workers party alone it's an issue for all of us in dominica because it is all right to choose a government that is being taken away or has been hijacked away from us so the nation must respond. Mm -hmm. Our response is, well, we are going to stay away from the election, but we are going to continue to push for these reforms. And we're going to continue to push for elections on this that should have been take place on the cycle. Because this election, we don't recognize it. It's not a legitimate election. We do not recognize it. And so we would we would like, as much as possible, persons to stay away from nominate from obtaining nomination. We would like as much as possible people not to participate in the election. And, and even if it means the government, they claim the government by default after nomination day because nobody else opposes them, that's okay. Because as far as we're concerned, we don't consider this to be a legitimate election. And we don't consider that the prime minister has or, the, or his team has the moral authority to run Dominica as a result of that illegitimate election and we will be advocating accordingly in dominica around the caribbean the rest of the world so that this 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 government to emerge will be seen for what it is mm -hmm. a rogue administration that doesn't play by the rules that bends the rules wherever it needs to in its favor and is is committed to ensuring that the people will not have the right to elect their own government by majority votes of the people, by the people, for the people, that they will have the right unto themselves through Ill illegalities, irregularities, and, rig and, and a rigged electoral process that serves them and them alone. Mm -hmm. The pushback against that is, is important for the salvation of our democracy, and that is why we stand. We'll yeah. be having a national public meeting in the capital city later today, yeah. 3 o'clock this afternoon, to, to deal with those issues and to, to to bring the people of Dominica into a common understanding of the collective responsibility to act that we share at this moment. The collective responsibility to act to save our democracy in this time of crisis. Yeah. We will spotlight and highlight the, the three o'clock engagement before before we conclude. Um, but let's let's talk a, a few a few more matters here. Um, Outside of more RSS support in Turuzu, I'm not sure that, that you will get anything happening across the Caribbean um, towards your cause. What's the role of the international community and, and how do you intend to engage there? Well, you know, the, the international community should have reasons to be concerned about what is happening in Dominica. Uh, if we go back to what I just told you about the the significant sums, the 4.2 billion, yeah. just that is outside of the country, uh, being uh, under the control of foreign foreign friends of the prime minister, from the sale of Dominican citizenships, there there is a lot going on there that the international community should be concerned about, especially with regard to the the, the legitimate movement of money 
and uh, the the financing of uh, unsavory activities around the world and of course the the question of the the citizens the persons who are receiving citizenship especially those who uh, have in their possession our diplomatic passports are, are guaranteed with those diplomatic passports seamless movement across borders in the international community uh, doing their thing. Alison Maduke, who, who the Nigerian government has moved on to see significant uh, assets she held, significant monies and, and, um, and properties around the world that they, they, have, they have claimed were stolen from the people of Nigeria. She was the holder of a Dominica diplomatic passport, as was Francesco Corallo, as was... Um, NG Lap Seng, as well was Ali Reza Monfared. Who yeah, your, your, Prime Minister, your Prime Minister, Mr. Lennox, has, has found himself being introduced to a good few of these um, suspicious individuals, if, if you know. Dodgy, these dodgy diplomats, these dodgy diplomats who, for a variety of reasons, find themselves in trouble with the law in the jurisdictions mm -hmm. where they operate. Mm -hmm. And uh, here they are operating with Immunity. Our diplomatic passport that allows them seamless movement across borders in the international community. It's a it's a huge problem, and there is reason for the rest of the world, the international community, to be paying close attention to what happens here because there has to be a reason why you could go to such lengths to deny the people free and fair elections, which which can only be because you want to be the government forever and ever. What are you afraid about losing government? What, what, what do you fear about losing government? Think of the number of times in St. Lucia uh, government has changed mm -hmm. in the last 20 years. Do you believe that that the people of, of St. Lucia are suffering any more than those in Dominica? St. Lucia is doing much better economically than Dominica. A lot more people in St. Lucia are employed and are, and are, are, are accumulating wealth for themselves and so on. So is Antigua, so is St. Kitts. Dominica, with all of the resources that we have from the sale of citizenships in the last five, ten years, we, we are not seeing the economic uplift benefit from it. We see some fancy buildings that go up um, in the name of citizenship by investment resources, some people, some fancy looking apartments and so on. But at the end of the day, this, this, this significant amount of money has done nothing for in facilitating them to earn their own money mm. and to grow their wealth and to, to 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 responsibly and in a very 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 good way build their families send their children to school extend themselves in the in the universe we 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 have this basic human thing that we just want to be who we want to be you know as individuals we want to live life and uh, what we find with 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 this business of government, less in some countries, more in other countries. The government ends up as a stumbling block in the way mm. of who wash mm. Chimera, mm -hmm. uh, in the way of people earning their own money and being their own people and and uh, having their own thoughts and, and um, spending their own money, do, living lives with freedom, their constitutions guarantee for them. The government of Dominica has emerged as a major stumbling block in the way of that. And uh, to the extent that the government wants to continue, the, the ruling party wants to continue that without being kicked out of office, it has decided it will take control of the electoral process so that nobody else has a chance. Yeah. I'm not sure, Mr. Mr. Linton, how well um, your chess moves are, but, but engage me for a bit. Let, let's play some chess and try to determine the Prime Minister's next political move. He's going to the polls on the 6th of, 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 um, of December, no doubt about that. He's also said that he has less time left in politics than what he has served, indicating that he's on his way out of elective politics. I know you know Gade, you know, but try to predict his next political move. There are some observers who say that he's paving that path for himself to the seat of presidency. What, what to you would be his next likely move? That's impossible to, pre to predict. The prime minister 
almost um, the prime minister knows one thing. He wants protection from being prosecuted for the things he has done. And one way of securing that protection is to remain in office, whether it's in the office of the prime minister or whether it's in office of the president. He can't afford to lose office at this point because of what will come after. So all everything the prime minister does is about that self-preservation right now. And so at one point in 2021, it looked as though he was going to move on and make way for former ambassador Vince Henderson uh, to take over the party, take over the, the, the leadership of the country. But Vince Henderson came in in a by-election in 2021, and uh, it appears has just gone quiet ever since. It was said that the prime minister in those circumstances would have made his way to the presidency where he would continue to benefit from immunity from, mm. from prosecution, so on. But then he has come now with this national reset and he seems to have offered someone else the presidency. So one of the, one of the 10 people who have, stepped, have agreed to step down uh, will most likely emerge as president of Dominica uh, sometime next year because the term of the current president ends in October. But it may come well before that for, for other reasons. Mm. And the person seems to have been well set up and has been prepared um, to take over as president while the prime minister himself says he has another two and a half years. The two and a half years he has, or he says he has, is, is the two and a half years that are on the clock for the next for the constitution next election mm -hmm. so why couldn't he just bow out spend the next two and a half years grooming whoever the successor would be and then bow out do not lead the party into the next election that is constitutionally due in may of 2025 instead he wants five more years for him to groom a successor so that he can disappear in two and a half years does that make any sense it is difficult to predict the behavior of somebody like that because you start. You want to start off believing that it is driven by logic, but it is not. The, 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 the only thing in the prime minister's head is self-preservation, and uh, it blows with the wind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me winding down now, uh, Mr. Mr. Linton. Your message to our citizens here in Saint Lucia. Your prime minister has a very tight knit relationship with our prime minister as well. Um, and he has called on the troops of the re ruling party here to protect the victory. How concerned, based on what's happening in your Dominica, should our Saint Lucians be? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know how tight knit the the relationship of the Prime Minister is with the Honourable Philip Pear uh, outside of politics. I, I knew I know Philip Pear since before he entered politics. Mm -hmm. Um, we are close friends from way back when. Spent a lot of time with him in St. Lucia. We have, uh, as a matter of fact, I was one of the first persons he called way back when he was considering entering the politics of the St. Lucia Labour Party. So uh, this is a person I know very well. And I know that uh, politics changes when you're in political office and you're prime minister and you have uh, the, the boys club or the, girl, the boys and girls club. Uh, that you have certain commitments to. But um, Philip Peer has never been somebody that I consider to be committed to, you know... Um, Hijacking to democracy? That, 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 like, no, I, I wouldn't consider Philip Peer to be a hijacker of democracy or somebody who is that way inclined. Yeah. Um, but of course, he, he could surprise me. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that I know the gentleman very well. Yes. Um, he has been friend for many 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 years to the point where some some people thought we were brothers mm. at one point yeah uh, decades, that, that, that very um very diplomatic response i didn't expect you to step on the toes of your old friend not at all mr linton um but to our <laughs> citizens but what, 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 what do you what do you know and can share with me because obviously you, you seem to know something that i don't know I, I know I know that they, they are comfortable enough that that he was here recently as recent as a month ago and he, okay. he okay. vociferously called on the troops 
of the Labour Party to protect the victory. So they have a good working relationship. I'm not, I'm not okay. saying that okay. it goes beyond that. I am, I am not denying or I'm not standing in the way of that. I just want to let you know that uh, this is a gentleman I know well, as well. Thank you. On, so, on not politics, not in politics, just as friends and one St. Lucia and the Dominican brother. Thank you. Uh, quickly, based on what's happening in Dominica, the hijacking of democracy, Barbados snap elections, Andrew Holness did the same in, in Jamaica. Should the citizens of St. Lucia share any concern? Yes, of course they should. Because um, there's a, there's a, a, a monkey-see-monkey-do dynamic that appears mm. to be at work. Uh, Mia Motley called the snap election. Uh, there is uh, the situation where Mia Motley's political advisor is also Roosevelt Skerritt's political advisor. So the, this thing to snap elections may have come from the political advisor having regard to how well it succeeded for Mia Motley in, in the is, is, that the um, good, is that the good gentleman at Cadres? The, which one? The good gentleman at Cadres, the political scientist. No, 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 no. That's somebody else. Uh, I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking specifically about Hartley Henry. Hartley oh. Henry's political advisor, um, Mia Motley, and he's also political advisor to Roosevelt Skerritt in Dominica. Has been for a number of years. Yeah. So, it seems that the advice going around that succeeds for one, others would like to take take it as well. So, don't be surprised if um, the, the Prime Minister of Saint Lucia, who is a Labour party prime minister may see some sense in what happened with um scared in dominica and and, and pop the gun early as, as we say oh. um, next time around so sessions yeah should should <laughs> sessions should look for that that's a possibility it's 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 the behaviors of the leaders in this region that we're looking at and uh, of course to the extent that they, they feel that they can benefit from what they see others doing you know yeah. you expect that they would want that too so and, yeah. and lastly from you so how can dominicans begin to free up themselves from that stranglehold of a hijacked democracy that that you painted earlier picture that you painted earlier. well they have to they have to they have to start taking on the institutions that are standing in the way of that uh, you have uh, the police force for example that is operating that has operated in the last 10 years or so more like a goon squad of the prime minister than a police force protecting lives and property and the rule of law in in dominica and enforcing the rule of law in dominica they they have they have concerned themselves more with being able to with expertise in policing meetings of the parliamentary opposition and other opposition parties than they are with uh, fighting crime and uh, keeping the peace as we say in dominica that is where they're strong. They're strong in uh, policing opposition events and harassing opposition politicians and opposition supporters. So there has to be a way that people take on the institutions of that nature and let them know, you know, you, you're serving the nation of Dominica. You're not serving any one man or any, any individual political party. Uh, we live under a constitution that, that must be respected. Uh, the, the, we, we have... Uh, certain rights that that constitution guarantees and the institutions of state have a role in ensuring that the rights of citizens under the constitution and and as christians of good conscience in the country are protected and preserved we, we start there but but we must the first thing for the people of dominica is to emerge from this paralysis of fear that we have we, we are fearful people we, we we fear coming out in the streets to demonstrate because the prime minister will send his police officers to, to shoot us or, or, or to intimidate us in some way. Um, so, so that fear is, is paralyzing a lot of us, and we, we need to emerge from that. Because we are not going to rescue this democracy from the hijacked state that is, it is in without active participation and involvement of citizens. The, the oppressor is not going to hand you back the privileges he has taken from you and are benefiting from so the starting point we must conquer our fear and be prepared to confront that which oppresses us and takes us away from the life of freedom and democracy 
that we have all signed on to and we want mm -hmm. with every breath that we take, with every step that we make. From all indications, that movement begins today at, at 3 o'clock on um, the front in, in Roseau. Um, we look You're going to be live? Hello, we, we're, unable, we're unable to carry it live, but we can do a link up on, on social media. <laughs> Had we have um, previous um, knowledge here, we would have um, tried to establish a link up. But we still have some time before the 6th of December, no doubt. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you very much for the invite. This was a pleasure, privilege. And uh, I, I wish you well. Um, good morning, St. Lucia. Looks like it is making a significant contribution to the education of the nation state and the advancement of the civilization in St. Lucia. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. Thank you for your kind words, Mr. Mr. Linton, and we look forward to engaging you at, at the next available opportunity. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Lennox Linton, the, parliament, the leader of the parliamentary opposition in um, Dominica is the leader of the opposition United Workers Party, but he's the leader of the parliamentary opposition. My special guest on this edition of the program talking all election developments over in the Nature Isle. Interesting times. Jenny Dawe, good morning. Also, hi to Laureen Benoit, um, Josie Stephen, um, and everyone on the Facebook Live who is over in Dominica. Let me say again hi to Connie. Hi to Alfred up in um, Purple City. Um, also, big shout out to um, Fodo in um, Tarish Pit, Purple City as well. Um, good morning to Albert. Um, and Kathleen. Kathleen is in... Um, is it Gotha? Uh, Kathleen is in, in Gotha. Tony, I shouted you earlier. Um, so big shouts to you as well. Enjoying his campaign. Tony is a scary boy. And he says he's not, um, he's not moving. But interesting developments in the Commonwealth of Dominica. St. Lucia, thanks for joining us. We'll be back again, God willing, tomorrow with another exciting, informative, and educational program. Justin will rise at 6 and we go up until 9 o'clock. On behalf of all of us here at Good Morning St. Lucia, thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye for now.